The purpose of this video is to show you how to download weather data from the COAGMET weather station network. Then uh, move that data over into Microsoft Excel and make plots or do analysis of the data set that you're interested in. To get access to the raw data, you go to the COAGMET homepage. Here you see its link. And you go down here to an option called raw data access. When you get to this page it lets you first select the location. I'm gonna pick this location here called FTC03. This is the weather station out at Ardeck, our ag research station uh, out on I-25 near the Budweiser plant. That's a weather station that's been there a long time and has a very robust data set. Then I'm going to pick the time period that I'm interested in. Let's look at last year, 2015. I'm going to start in January and I want it to fit in and end at the end of December. Okay, so that's going to give me a full year of data. Oh, wait a minute. I need to go up here to January 1. Okay, and then you have to tell it whether you want daily, hourly, or all. Right? I'm going to get the daily data. And I'm going to show you what happens when you press submit. All you see is this big chunk of comma delineated ASCII data. Okay, it's kind of very difficult to interpret. What are you going to do with that? There are columns here, and they're all comma separated. And but we need to know which variable is represented by which column. So I'm going to go back actually and go down to this place called raw data documentation and this tells me the order of the columns or the format of the data that we just looked at. Here's the daily format. There's 27 variables everything from mean and maximum temperatures, minimum temperature, wind speed, precipitation, soil temperatures, all the kind of data that we might be interested in. Now, ultimately, these should be the column headers over in our Excel spreadsheet. So let's um, figure out how to do that. I'm just going to cheat here and copy these. Hit Control C. Then I'm going to come over here to a blank Microsoft Excel sheet. And I'm actually going to paste it in here in the second row not in the first row. Hit control V and you can see it's actually just you know one big cell but we really want these across the top not down the side and so I'm going to select this again hit control C copy it again now I'm going to paste it in the very upper left hand corner the first cell but I'm going to paste special and I'm going to transpose. Okay. Now that pasted it across the top like headers like we wanted. Now I'm going to delete this data. I'm going to go back up here to row one and I'm going to format that auto column width. Now we're looking better. We've got columns all the way, headers all the way across the top of our sheet in the correct order. Now, one of the things that's a little misleading, if you actually go back to the website and you ask it for the data, there's actually another column in here that they didn't list in raw data format. It's actually the location. This stands for Fort Collins position three. So what that means is there's really another column in here. So I'm going to insert another column in here and call this location. Now I should be in good shape to move some data over into this sheet. Now you may want to save this file and use it sort of as a template anytime you want to download daily weather data from COAGMET. So I might go file, save as, put it over here, 
and actually I've already done this earlier, but I'm going to do it again. Coag mat daily header template I'll call it this time just to give it a different name and the nice thing about that is now I have a little template I can use anytime I want to go get data from CoAgMet. So now back to the data set that we were looking at let's go back over here again we selected the location the starting date January 1st 2015 ending date December 31st we want daily data we're gonna hit submit now we gotta to have to paste this over into Microsoft Excel so I'm gonna hit control A to select all the data control A control C to copy it now that should be on my clipboard I come back over to this position, my first open cell, and hit control V and paste the data in. Now this still doesn't look right because it basically pasted all this data into one cell. It didn't separate it out as we wanted. So what you do now is you go up to the data tab. All right and you ask it to do what's called text to columns. This is going to partition the data out into columns like we want. It's delimited. It's you know, For delimiters you usually want to select tab and comma. You hit next and we just want it to move forward. We don't need to worry about this. And there we go. Now our data set's looking like we want. It seems like everything's in the right position. And we're looking okay. So at this point we do have the data in Excel. We could rename this sheet. Call it data 2015 and at this point we're ready to do analysis so although it might be smart to save it again save as okay at this point we've collected the data loaded it into Excel and we're ready for analysis now something we might be interested for example is plotting the annual pattern of air temperature so we could click on here select this hold down the control key and click that both of these columns are selected say insert scatter and I get a scatter chart of the annual temperature I'm gonna right click on that move chart give it a new name and now I've got to look at the temperatures at our deck over 2015 this is the average daily temperature so we've quickly downloaded data we've got it into Excel we're plotting it let's just work with this data a little bit more while we've got it here handy uh, and, and fix up this chart a little bit. I'm going to use the quick layout feature to add axis titles. I'm going to get rid of the legend. Delete. Alright. I'm going to title these now. And we might want to put some other information on our titles to make it sure we know everything about this data so now if somebody looks at the plot they should be able to 
know what it represents. It's the mean temperature at the Ardeck location, Fort Collins, Colorado for the year 2015. Units of Celsius and we have the dates. So we can clearly see some interesting patterns here but we might want to add a trend line to uh, get a little bit more information. So I'm going to click on right click on one of the symbols and go add trend line. Get it over here so you can see it. And I think I'm going to use a um, moving average and about four days usually gives you a pretty nice look at that. And you can see now we can see this dotted line. We can reformat this if we want to make it a little bit easier to see. I don't want it to be dashed. I want it to be solid. So now we're starting to look a little better. We have more information. We can see some clear patterns. There was this really cold period in March it looks like. And we're getting a better look at things. We can also um, change some other formatting just to get us a better looking graph. I feel like that's a little bit small. I like to make my uh, legends about 12 or 14 point or my axis labels excuse me. These are about 12. You can We can reformat this x-axis a little bit. So it looks a little better. Um, one thing that, that we often want to do is change the units here to something closer to a month. 30 days in this case. Okay and we might also want to change the direction of the text here make it vertical it's looking better now see the dates a little bit clearer um, we might want to modify the tick marks add a tick mark on the major one so we'll see a tick mark here now so again, now it's starting to look like something that uh, we can work with in a nice format. I also, on my graphs, I don't like this to be open along here. So I'm going to right click that format plot area and put in a solid line here. Now I've got a line all the way around my data. So that's not too bad. We could even change this a little bit. It's going from minus 20 to 30 degrees. That's not bad. But, you know, it doesn't ever really get quite that cold. We can change that to minus 15, for example. Gives us just a little bit more information. So now we have a nice look at the annual air temperature over 2015 at our deck.